After a late attempt to come back failed due to an error made by the Australian team, the United States of America has been awarded the President's Cup for the second time in three years. The United States have gained their 12th Presidential Cup in 14 editions despite a rally from the internationals. Let's learn more about it in today's video. First off, USA's comeback. The United States of America prevailed as the champions of the President's Cup for the 12th time in the tournament's 14-year history. Despite a spiraled comeback attempt by the internationals, the internationals were just 11 points behind the Americans after Saturday when the competitions took place. This was the same defect that Europe overcame to win the Ryder Cup in 2012, See Woo Kim's thrilling victory over Justin Thomas on the 18th hole and Sebastian Munzo's victory world number one, Scotty Scheffler by a score of 2-1 and one, kept the internationals in the mix, while Sebastian Munoz's victory over Scotty Sheffield by a score of 2-1 and one, kept the chase going. What's more, Adam Scott and Cameron Davis lost. Both Adam Scott and Cameron Davis of Australia were eliminated by Jordan Spieth and Patrick Cantley respectively, which brought the championship within striking distance. Tony Fianu and Xander Schaufel won their respective matches to take the President's Cup after Taylor Pendridge and Corey Connors, both of whom had gone winless during the last week, were knocked out of the contention in matches that came down to the wire. Schaufel remarked that it was a wonderful experience to win. It looked like their team was going to lose for a while, but in the end, they pulled it out, which was a very proud moment for them. Up next, Colin Morikawa and Max Holmes victory. Colin Morikawa and Max Homa's victory over Mito Pereira and Tom Kim, which occurred after the United States has already ensured its possession of the trophy, served by further solidifying the American's position. A late triumph for Christian Bezidinot against Kevin Kisner contributed to the United States of America achieving a respectable final score of 17.5 to 12.5. Earlier, Kim made a critical birdie putt from 10 feet away, putting pressure on Thomas, who missed an even shorter one. Thomas missed the putt, which would have put put Kim in a better position. Thomas held a two-up lead after the first seven holes of the match, but Kim battled back to the equal to score on the 14th hole and eventually won the match. Coming up, we have Scheffler's loss. The tournament featured the best player in the world, but things didn't go the way he had hoped. Following his defeat at the hands of Munoz, Scheffler became the lone participant in the competition who did not win a single game. He had not won a single match in the President's Cup, much like Nick Price did in 1994 when he competed there 0-3-1. The two Australians, Scott and Davis, had a difficult day. On the other hand, Spieth was victorious over Davis by a score of 4-3, while Cantlay prevailed over Scott by a score of 3-2. Hideki Matsuyama was only a few inches away from sealing a historic victory over Sam Burns when his bunker shot on the 18th hit the flag, but did not go in the hole. He made an accommodation by donning a tie. The United States team, which was a current advantage of 12-1-1 in the all-time President's Cup competition, was victorious for the ninth year in a row by amassing four points five points from the 12 single matches that were played on Sunday at Quail Hollow. Lastly, the U.S. team might have had it easy. Cam Smith, the winner of the British Open, and several other top players who had switched from the PGA Tour to LIV Golf were ineligible to play. The odds were stacked heavily in favor of the United States team winning the tournament. The U.S. team featured 10 of the world's top 16 players. The international team was unsuccessful in their attempt to win the President's Cup for the first time since 1998, despite attempting a comeback on the last day of competition. Davis Love, the captain of the American squad had nothing but appreciation for the effort. It was a difficult task. They had been putting in a lot of hours over the last month. They showed up all ready to go with no hesitation. To put it another way, Trevor Immelman and his teammates did an outstanding job despite the intense amount of pressure they were under. Spieth, who had never before won a singles match at either the Ryder Cup or the President's Cup, became only the sixth player in the history of the tournament to compile a perfect 5-0 record. In other news, Johnny Bairstow broke his leg in a golfing accident. Johnny Bairstow has decided not to return to the field for the remaining of his year's competition after undergoing surgery to treat a broken leg and dislocated ankle. With an injury he sustained last month when he fell while playing golf, the 33-year-old will not be able to participate in the 2020 World Cup in Australia or the following test series in Pakistan. He dislocated his ankle, which caused damage to his syndesmosis joint and lateral ligament, and he fractured his fibula in three places, which required him to have a place in the bone. The operation was a success, and the staples that had been placed on his skin were removed three weeks following the treatment. At this point, the most important things are bringing down the swelling of his ankle and encouraging him to start using it again. The subsequent weeks and months will be extremely important for the rehabilitation. It is too soon to set a time frame for his return to play, as the key priorities at the moment are getting back on the feet and ensuring that it is done correctly. It would be premature to establish such a timetable at this point. He will not be able to engage in any additional activities in 2022, but he is keeping his fingers crossed for what the year 2023 
may offer. Up next, Amir Malik wants to make golf more inclusive for Muslims. Golf has fascinated Amir Malik since his childhood in Kingston upon Thames, London. Malik would have wanted to be on the field cheering for friends, but he knew no one who played in 2012. His former boss took him to a driving range. Malik eventually upped his game. In 2017, he joined a local club and played Sunday matches. Malik alleged he was made to feel uncomfortable because of Islamic beliefs in gambling. Particularly during office tournaments, his anxiety was worsened by having to interrupt his rounds five times a day to pray. Malik reportedly departed early after each competition when members would drink at the clubhouse. He claimed being excluded from the festivities for his faith made him never really feel that he had a place in the golf community. The uneasiness gradually transformed into hatred as he played on to more recognized courses. Malik, who was born in Pakistan, has experienced bigotry while playing golf. He founded the Muslim Golf Association, MGA, in December 2019 to capitalize on pockets of interest he had spotted throughout his travels. He invited people to a charity golf day in the Grove, a popular site outside of London. The first assembly of the MGA would be inclusive of people of all faiths, with designated areas for prayer and neither gaming nor alcohol being permitted. The remark took Malik completely by surprise before the day of the event. All 72 available spots were taken and by the end of the week there were more than a thousand persons on the waiting list. Finally, LIV Golf will be airing its tournaments on Fox Sports 1. Multiple sources have told Golf Week that LIV Golf is close to finalizing an agreement to buy TV times for its tournaments on US cable television. The deal, which has yet to be formalized, would be with Fox Sports 1. The person familiar with the talks stated that LIV would not be compensated by the contract despite the fact that media firms generally pay sports leagues a sizable rights fee to air their products. Instead, LIV, which is controversially funded by the Saudi Arabian regime's public investment fund, would buy time on the cable channel to telecast its events, a decision that would be widely viewed as a failure to draw substantial economic interest in what it is offering. An insider in the entertainment business claims that LIV's initial attempts to partner with the NBC, CBS, Disney, Apple, and Amazon were all unsuccessful and that Lachlan Murdoch, the executive chairman and CEO of Fox Corp, personally intervened to get Fox Sports involved. Jared Kushner, Donald Trump's son-in-law, has reportedly been calling broadcasters to drum up an investment and interest in an LIV television package. As revealed by Sports Business Journal last month, Kushner's Affinity Partners, a private equity asset, raised $2 billion from the Saudi Public Investment Fund in 2021. LIV Golf has been accused of turning the golf course into a battlefield and has left the community divided. Many players, including the world's number one, have made the shift to the Saudi-backed golf series. That's a wrap for this video, my friends. What do you know about the U.S. win in the President's Cup? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos just like this. Thank you so much for watching, my friends. See you in the next one.